And I would like to give a brief introduction to our presenter today, Joseph Kersey. Um, Joseph Kersey is a geographer with a focus on the use of geographic information systems in education. He has served as the president of the National Council for Geographic Education and has given two talks on the whys of where. He holds three degrees in geography and has served as a ge geographer in four sectors of society, including government, academia, private industry, and nonprofit organizations. Joseph authored over 75 chapters and articles on GIS, education, and related topics, and visits 35 universities annually, conducts professional development for educators, he has created 5,000 videos, 750 lessons, 1,000 blog essays, and authored eight books, including Interpreting Our World, Essentials of Environment, Spatial Mathematics, Tribal GIS, International Perspectives on Teaching and Learning, and the GIS Guide to Public Domain Data. But as a lifelong learner, he feels as though he's just getting started and thus actively seeks mentors, partners, and collaboration. All right, and with that, I will be passing it over to Joseph. Well, many thanks for the kind words, Brianna, and for CAEE's support for this and prior workshops that I've given. I'm looking forward to working with you all, not just today, but in the future. I've got my contact information that I'm going to share in a moment. But today's focus, which is very appropriate for Earth Day, because it also touches on one of the, well, actually several of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, is all about water and how to teach and learn about water with interactive web mapping tools and data. So I'm going to focus on giving you, empowering you with tools, data sets, but more importantly, why this all matters. And lastly, give you confidence that you can actually use these tools in your own instruction at a variety of different levels in a, in a variety of different disciplines. One of the things I love about mapping technologies that touches a lot of different disciplines. And Brianna mentioned my spatial mathematics book. So mathematics, history, environmental science, geography, earth science, uh, and even sociology and other things. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a nice chat about the touch points of all of these things today in the next three hours. Just kidding. We don't have three hours. Just want to make sure you folks are on your toes. Here's my contact information. I also have this whole thing as a story map, which is one of the tools that we'll talk about today a story map. And so I've got quite a bit of content in this story map. I'm not going to have time to go through every single link in here, but I invite you in that chat box to explore that story map even while I'm speaking so you can start investigating on your own. Okay. Now, I'm rather passionate about this, as Brianna very kindly mentioned. I have on the Our Earth YouTube channel, I have over 5,000 videos. Okay, so just like you passionate educators, I'm very passionate about why this all matters and why we need to teach about water and related issues with our students at all levels. Not just here in Colorado, but around the world. And I also wanted to mention that if you want a daily dose of all things geo, STEM, mapping, uh, I do have a Twitter feed that's a little geeky and nerdy, but it's all focused on what we're talking about today. And as Brianna also very kindly mentioned, I have toes in four sectors of society waters. And I'm not going to bore you with my own background, but just to let you know that having these tools on your tool belt helps your students to pursue pathways like these and many others. They're going to be valuable in multiple sectors of society, private, private industry, nonprofits, academia, schools, and government agencies, local to global. So it's not just me saying this, it is the global community of people using these tools beyond the classroom in the actual workplace, which presents a bit of a challenge for us as educators because you're using, with these tools that I'm demonstrating today, professional software and tools. It's not educational software. First of all, it's running in the cloud, so there's nothing to install, as I'll talk about in a bit. But you've got to have a little bit of familiarity with it, but also um, how do I teach with this? And that's the goal of today. How do I use these amazing, interactive, real-time, often, data sets at my fingertips in a meaningful way so that students are engaged, so that they care, and most importantly, that they become change agents, change agents on the landscape. So we're going to talk about a lot about mapping today, 
and mapping tools. But remember, the goal is not to learn how to use these geotechnology tools, these geographic information systems or GIS tools. Oftentimes, as a person that serves on our ESRI education team, which supports schools, tribal colleges, community colleges, universities, libraries, and museums, so we're all about education, and that's why I've got my contact information there. I'm a, I'm a real person. You don't go to esri.com and see a bot. You know, may I help you? That's not a real person, right? It's we're actually real people, and so that's what we're, that's what our focus is. We're all educators on the team, and so we want to help you be successful with these tools. But oftentimes people say, "Hey, Joseph, I've got my data on the map," and I'll say, "Well, that's great." And why do I say and? Well, because the map, the data. The tools that we'll talk about today are means to a greater goal. The greater goal is to understand our world, the physical, the cultural, uh, the space-time interaction, uh, the dynamic planet that we have, the interaction between the ecospheres, uh, the biosphere, the lithosphere, the atmosphere, the anthrosphere, right? All of those spheres and the cycles, the carbon cycle, the hydrologic cycle, et cetera, and to see the Earth holistically as a system of systems. That's what these tools foster. So getting the data on the map, whether it's data you collect yourself or the data that we'll pull up here, is only a means to an end, right? Maps are representations of reality. They're not reality, they're representations. They're very useful representations, but again, the greater goal is to get the students to understand the interaction between these elements on our wonderful dynamic planet. Anyway, happy Earth Day. And I started off Earth Day at 5 a.m. You can do this tomorrow morning. I went outside in the eastern horizon. You may know this. There are four planets that are lined up right before the sun comes up. So go and check that out tomorrow morning if it's clear. It's uh, fascinating. And it kind of sets the nice, a nice tone for the day. So that was the start of my day. And I'm really happy to be with you all. First of all, why teach with these geotechnology tools? Well, I think one reason is that geo-awareness, not just on Earth Day or Earth Week, and in other places that we could mark during the year, Earth Science Week in October, GIS Day in November, Geography Awareness Week in November, et cetera. All throughout the year, geo-awareness, awareness of the issues that you and I care about as environmental ed educators, uh, is at an all-time high, right? People beyond our community are talking about inequities, climate, natural hazards, resilience, sustainability, and all those things that we used to just kind of talk about in our community. So that's actually good. It's a good opportune moment for us and a good moment for your students going forward because, again, these, these issues are serious. They transcend physical boundaries. They transcend political boundaries. And they transcend disciplinary boundaries, as I touched on earlier. So it's not just environmental ed or geography or earth science. It touches on multiple disciplines, which is, I think, one of the advantages of using these things in the classroom. So the geo-awareness is at an all-time high. And as I touched on a moment ago, the skills that you're fostering using these interactive web maps are in high demand in the workplace. I talked about that a moment ago, and I don't, I don't want to spend more time on that. But just to let you know that my organization hires, we have about 8,000 employees at ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute. We actually hire people with the skills that you all are fostering in the classroom inquiry, critical thinking, spatial thinking. Those are the kind of people that we want, and so do our hundreds of business partners, as well as these other organizations that I have here. GIS, Geographic Information Systems, using these tools, which actually produce all of the web mapping layers and maps that we'll use today, give you and your students superpowers. I truly believe that. They give you superpowers in the classroom and beyond. OK, that said. A large component, third reason, of the big data world that we're all immersed in is mappable. So increasingly, those IoT, Internet of Things feeds, weather stations, stream gauges, wildfire perimeters, traffic, etc., are linked to a latitude, longitude, or a street address, or some other geolocation component that allows you and I to map those things and then look at the spatial patterns. Remember, the map is not the end goal. Looking at the patterns, the relationships. What's the relationship of this variable to this variable spatially across the landscape? Uh, increasingly, those feeds are geo-enabled. And the nice thing about these tools, I believe, is that you can use them in two ways. You can consume data that others have created, NOAA, NASA, 
USGS, State of Colorado DNR, uh, the Nature Conservancy, et cetera. They're all producing geospatial data. And I used to work for those organizations, as I mentioned, that produce data, science and mapping organizations. I worked for the USGS, for example, from the Cretaceous to the Holocene, a long period of time. Anyway, the point is, those organizations continue to make data. And they were, in times past, the only organizations that actually could do this kind of work. But now, with the advent of the web enabling geospatial technology as a platform, you and I and other educators can actually use the data that those agencies create, but also, and number two here, you and your students can create your own data. If you've got a spreadsheet with latitude longitudes or city-state combinations or a street addresses, you can map a spreadsheet. You can collect data in the field and map it. There's a lot of ways that you can actually map and, correct and collect your own data. So I think that gives the additional power. Sure, you can create your own data, but you can also use data that others have created. That's what we're going to start with is number, number two, the data others have created. I also want to just assure you folks that GIS is a spatial science, and it is anchored in the broader science community. So for example, if you go to GIS for science, you'll see all sorts of applications, which is a nice way to start all this off with, with students about, hey, you know, geospatial technology and spatial thinking are all over the UN SDGs, um, E.O. Wilson's Half Earth Foundation, the Jane Goodall Elephant Foundation, and other initiatives around the world. I mean, GIS is a fundamental component to all of those discussions, and you can explore more on this GIS for Science page. Also, wanted to mention that we have in here, in this story map, I've got the climate hub. Now, we're not overly focused on climate today, but it affects water. So I thought I'd mention that we actually have a whole set of resources, interactive maps and layers and so on, on this ESRI climate hub, okay, for you to explore. Some of the data is in real time, et cetera. So there's, there's no shortage of visualizations and maps on this alone. This could occupy our whole webinar, but alas, we're going to be focused on, on water, which is a good thing also. Okay, so that all being said, those are what I would submit to you all as the three reasons for considering using these tools in your educational journey. Now, as Brianna and I were talking about before the webinar started, this could be analogous to chemistry or physics or biology. You're not going to learn any of those disciplines in 50 minutes together, and you're not going to learn all of geotechnologies in 50 minutes together. However, I truly believe that with this short webinar, you're going to be empowered to say, you know what, I don't have to be a geotechnologies guru to use these tools in the classroom. Now, I know we have some people on the webinar that have been using web mapping applications, story maps, dashboards, geotechnologies for many years, like Ms. Olson out there. And others are just new to this. But no matter where you are in the sort of journey, um, I think that you'll find that you know what, I get what Joseph's saying, and I'm, I can do that tomorrow in the classroom. That's the kind of confidence that I want you to, to gain from this workshop. Now I've got